It's Create Day, my friends. Today I have five fun and affordable DIYs that are suitable for Christmas and the entire winter season. Welcome to my channel. Let's get started. For the first project, I'm using three of the Dollar Tree wood dice. I am also going to be using one of these little wood slices from Hobby Lobby. And then I have another little wood slice that came off of one of my birch wood logs that I cut to even up for a different project. It's uneven, but that makes it almost perfect for this project, so I'm going to use it. Now I'm going to apply my Type Bond wood glue to the bottom of the first die and then attach it to the top of the third die. Use my clamps to hold these in place and let them dry. I tried to line them up the best I could and then used a baby wipe to wipe off any excess glue that had seeped out. I also used the tight bond glue to go ahead and glue the smaller wood slice into the center of the larger one. When the glue was set up on the wooden dice, I went ahead and gave them a coat of Dixie Belle's buttercream chalk paint. And I am going to use my antiquing wax for the wood slices, watering it down a little bit and brushing it onto the top. If you haven't guessed yet, this is going to be a little snowman hat. I'm brushing this onto the top and wiping back a little bit of the excess. And then I will do the same on the top of the brim of the hat. I also used the antiquing wax on the underside just around the outer edges that could be seen uh, from underneath if you were to look underneath it because this will be attached to the top of that stack of dice. I'm using a sea sponge to put on my second coat of paint just kind of dabbing it all over trying to smooth out any brush strokes that were on there. And once that coat of paint is dry I took some sandpaper and wanted to distress around the edges and somewhat in the middle sections also that it just wasn't working out very well so I took it out to the garage and used my orbital sander on it instead. I cut the nose out from a large craft stick and painted it the color pumpkin. For the eyes, I'm going to use these little googly eyes and paint them with my black acrylic paint. I'm applying with some hot glue these just small little natural looking buttons to the front. And since I'm doing three and I'm working with two pieces of the wood die, I spaced them, trying to get them evenly spaced so that I ended up with two on the middle section and one on the bottom. Now for the eyes and the nose, I decided to go with the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. These were really tiny and I just felt like it would be a lot easier and I would have more control over how much glue I was getting on there versus trying to use a, you know, hot glue. I, I was afraid I would just end up with a big mess, burn my fingers, and it would end up all over the place. So that's why I went with this glue and it works really well. So now I want to add a little bit of sparkle to his eyes, so I'm just taking the bottom end of a paintbrush, dipping it in my white acrylic paint, and then putting a little dot on each eye. Now I'm adding some woodsy smoke, just kind of a dry brush around the edges and kind of um, also across the center section of his nose to give it a more rustic look. For his arms, I'm just using some natural twigs that I found. I'm going to break off the pieces that I think will work. Drill a small hole in each side where I think his arm should go. And then I can hot glue those into place.
For his mouth, I'm going to do the same thing that I did for the little sparkle in his eyes and use the end of a paintbrush to just make some little dots in a little, you know, into the shape of a little smiley face. Now it's time to attach his hat, and I'll do that with some tight bond wood glue. Now something else you could do here, uh, once this glue set up, or even before you apply the hat, you could use one of those little um, eye screws down into the center portion of that hat, and then it could be a hanging ornament. Once the wood glue was set up, I went ahead and cut a little strip of this flannel fabric for his scarf, wrap that around his neck, and secure it with some hot glue. With that all in place the way I wanted it, I went ahead and used my scissors to cut the little fringes on the bottom of the scarf. I'm adding this rusty star and a couple of little snowflakes to the side of his hat. The snowflakes are actually little buttons that I can cut the back part of that button off with my little nippers that I have. You can actually, these are specifically made for doing this to buttons. And I got mine, I believe, at Joann's. But yeah, it does come off. It took a little bit of effort, but it comes off. And then now you have a flat back, and it makes it easy to apply it onto a surface with some glue. This one, this first one I put on his scarf. And then I added two more up there next to the rusty star on his hat. And that's going to do it for this little guy. I think he is super cute. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments. For my next project, I have a couple of tin cans that I gave a coat of my flat white Rust-Oleum paint as a base, and then I'm going to use E6000 to glue the smaller can onto the top of the larger can. I'm, I'm doing these so that the two bottoms are together, so I have an opening at the bottom, which I will cover with this little wood round that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. And then the top of the uh, top can will be covered by the snowman's hat. So I'm using E6000 to glue this in. It fits really snugly just into that opening. So I'm going to use this little mallet to kind of pound it down so it's like halfway in that opening. If you can see what I'm doing here. So that the glue is holding it like in the middle of that wood round into the can. I hope that makes sense. So now I want to do like a little patchwork quilt on this one. So I'm putting some cornstarch out onto my silicone mat and taking my air dry clay. I'm going to roll this out so that I can cut some squares and rectangles out of it. I didn't measure the thickness. Um, it was probably about an eighth of an inch thick after I got done rolling it out. I'm using this uh, mini cutter set that I got from Amazon. I can leave the link below in the description box as well as everything else that I'm using in this video. I cut out various sizes of the rectangles and the squares just using up as much as I could get out of that one little bit of air dry clay. Then I was able to um, take the excess, add it to, with some more clay, roll it out again, and get some more shapes out of it. I didn't want to do too many at a time because I'm going to be doing some impressions on these. 
and if they sit for too long they would get dried out and I wouldn't be able to do that. So I had to work kind of in small batches. I'm using my tight bond wood glue to attach these to the bottom can. I originally thought about doing both cans, but after I got the bottom done, I changed my mind and just went with what I had on the bottom section of the snowman. And there's no specific uh, way to do this. I just tried to fit these in almost like a, a puzzle, just adding in the different shapes, trying to get them to fit the best I could. And then these are the little uh, stamps that I'm going to use to make my impressions. I'm just going to use this snowflake one and just do some random snowflakes over the larger squares and rectangles. I'm not going to do any snowflakes on the little tiny rectangle that you see there. So I just keep working in sections to figure out which way these will fit best applying them and then immediately going in with that little stamp to make the impression of the snowflake. Now I'm going to take this embossing stylus. I got this off of Amazon. It came in a pack of five of them. And I'm just making little dots around the edges of all the squares and the rectangles, kind of like little stitching marks. I'm not pushing all the way through that clay. I'm just making the indentation so that it's visible. And this will give me more texture on this um, and kind of give it like a stitched look like a quilt. I'm using Dixie Bell's chalk mineral paint in the color buttercream. I'm doing a really good coat over the entire piece making sure I get down in between all those little squares and rectangles and then I when that's dry I seal it with my select seal matte sealer. You can use whatever sealer you want to use. It just needs to be sealed because now I'm going to apply some Van Dyke Brown Glaze and I want to be able to wipe this back trying to keep as much down in the crevices as I can but I don't want the entire piece coated with all this dark glaze so I will be wiping a lot of it back. I start with a towel and then I grab a baby wipe and clean up even more of that so that it just stays down in all the details. I'm going to do this around the entire piece, working in sections so that the glaze does not dry on me before I have the chance to wipe it back. I'm applying his hat with some hot glue. This hat was something I already had in my stash. It came off of another decor item from many, many years ago. It already had some stuffing up in the inside of the hat, so that made it perfect for this little project. And with my black acrylic paint, it's time to start his face. I'm doing just some oval eyes. And even with those ridges on the can, it really wasn't that hard. I, I was kind of nervous about this because I'm not good at like hand painting features. But, I, you know, I think it turned out okay. It, you know, it looks handmade for sure. But I gave him some little eyebrows and then uh, a kind of a squiggly mouth. I did another nose out of a craft stick like I did before and cut, painted it with that same pumpkin colored paint. And then I, when that was dry, I went over it with the Van Dyke Brown Glaze instead of the paint that I used on the other one. I used a fine tip paintbrush to do the little white sparkle 
technique in the eyes again with my white chalk paint. And then I added his nose with some hot glue. Next, I'm taking my metallic gold paint and I'm just going to do a little bit of dry brushing around this. It didn't show up as well as I thought it might, so I did kind of start going in a little bit heavier with it. I thought about using Rub and Buff, but I felt like it would just be too much. I still wanted this to be rustic looking, but just have a little bit of that gold shimmer on the edges of all those little uh, squares and rectangles. Next is to add his scarf. I'm using a piece of tea towel that I ripped, just wrapping it around his neck and securing it in place with hot glue. I'm adding some jute twine, wrapping this around several times, and then I will tie it off into a knot just underneath that piece of tea towel that I have already added here. I made a simple shoestring bow out of this ribbon. I'm going to attach that with some hot glue and then I will apply a rusty star over the center of that bow. I trim up all the edges of the ribbon, the tea towel, and the jute string. And here's how this one turned out. I'm using another tin can for my next project. I wanted to be able to cut the bottom off of this, but my can opener would not grip onto that rounded bottom. I was wanting to make a pocket posy, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen, but normally you would cut that bottom off. I went ahead and spray painted this with a coat of my flat white Rust-Oleum spray paint. Then I took it out to my workbench, put a towel over it. I'm simulating here. I pounded it down with a hammer until I ended up with this horrible mess. It would not pound down all the way, um, but I decided to just stick with it and see if I could turn this into a pretty piece of decor. I gave it a coat of my white chalk paint, and I'm going to take this napkin that I got from Amazon, just cut out one of the squares there and remove the back ply. I'm going to decoupage this onto the front of that tin can. So I'm laying this out to see how I want it to be on here. And then I can go ahead and apply this with my Mod Podge working in sections starting at the top. Just doing a little bit at a time so that I have time to smooth out the wrinkles. Then I apply the Mod Podge to my next section, the middle section, smooth that down, and then I do the third section towards the bottom after that. I let that dry for a little while and then I did my top coat of Mod Podge over the napkin. When that was dry, I just took some sandpaper and uh, in a downward motion went around the edges to remove any excess napkin. And then it was on to painting the back. I'm using Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint in the color Dusty Blue. I'm going to run this across the entire back 
and get it just up to those edges of that napkin. I want to just slightly overlap the napkin so I don't have a seam. Now to add some color variation, I'm taking some of that dusty blue and some of the white chalk paint. I'm kind of mixing these colors together with my little sea sponge and just sponging that on over the back of this and I'm going to like bring that up to those edges and just slightly touching over onto the edges of the decoupage napkin as well. And then I'm going to add this color of my home decor chalk paint. This one is called Glacier. I'm just going to sponge that onto the back as well. So now we have three different colors or shades of blue going on. Now I'm taking some of this tea towel that I've cut into strips. I'm going to backfill this big hole that's in the back where it kind of caved in so that I can wrap this same tea towel around that bottom section and this will give it something to kind of grab onto instead of just trying to do a strip of fabric over this gaping hole. So I'm just adding these strips in with hot glue to backfill that and give me something to glue that the rest of the tea towel to. So now here we go. I'm going to start with the long strip of tea towel starting there at the back, applying it with my hot glue and then wrapping this around. I'll go around a couple of times and basically I'm just covering up all of that ugliness on the bottom section of this tin can. When I got to that side edge there, I went ahead and trimmed it up, did the final little bit of hot glue to keep that in place, and then I trimmed off the excess that was hanging down to, that would prevent it from standing up. This, When we're done with this, you can either hang it or it can stand on its own. Once I had that trimmed up, I just took any excess that was still hanging down and hot glued that to the bottom of the can. So now I'm going to wrap some jute twine around this as well, starting on the one side and just wrapping this around several times, securing it with hot glue as needed. Then I can trim that off. And now I need to burn off all the little fuzzies with my lighter. And then we can move on to the handle. I'm using this 20 gauge wire that I picked up from Michael's. And I'm also using these little, they're buttons actually, but they're little miniature light bulbs, like Christmas bulbs, that I got from Hobby Lobby. I'm wrapping the wire around this dowel rod so that it will have a nice little uh, twisted top to it. I have to leave a little bit of straight wire on either end so that I can uh, push that up through a hole on either side of my little tin can. So I just drilled two small holes so that that wire could go in through there so I could attach it. I'm threading on the little buttons onto the wire, just wrapping them around the curly cues, getting them evenly spaced. So now you can see where I've drilled two small holes, one on each side, and I'm going to feed that into the wire through the hole, bring it up and wrap it around the wire itself. I wish I had left a little bit longer piece of wire. I didn't have a lot of um, room to work with this as far as twisting it onto itself, but it did work out okay. It just twisted that around and then I secured it with some hot glue so it wouldn't be wobbly. And it just, um, you know, will stand up nice and straight. And it's secure enough that you could um, hang, like hang it like an ornament with that wire. Mm -hmm. 
So now I'm going to add some embellishments on the front. I've got a couple little pieces of greenery. I'm keeping this really simple. I don't want to detract from the napkin that I have on there. So just a couple of pieces of greenery, some fit berries, and some little mini pine cones. I'm adding this little wood slice into the center of the bottom of that can to help fill up that space. It wasn't completely steady standing upright on its own. I felt like it would get knocked over easily. So by gluing this into place, it made it a lot more stable to stand on its own. Now for my final embellishments, I'm adding a simple shoestring bow out of this black and red ribbon. And then I'm also going to add a rusty star and a rusty bell to the front. I added some Christmas picks to the inside of this little tin can. And that was it for this one. Here's how it turned out. For my next project, I have this thrifted spindle. I think it was a candle holder. It has, like it's missing something on the top. You can see something was glued on there, so I'm not really sure. But I thought it was perfect for what I wanted to do with it. I went ahead and gave it a coat of Fusion Fusion's Casement Paint. You know, by the time I get done with um, the painting of this and then distressing it, it doesn't look a whole lot different than it does to begin with, which is kind of weird. But I liked adding a fresh coat of paint and just giving it my own touch. This is a mold I got from Amazon. I'm going to use one of the little round ones to make the buttons for the front of this snowman. I'm using IOD's Air Dry Clay. And I made three of these, and then I will glue them on to the front with my uh, tight bond wood glue. When the glue had set up enough that I was safe to paint these, I did so with that same paint by Fusion in the color Casement. The nose for this one is going to be made out of air dry clay. I have a little piece that I'm kind of just rolling into a round yet triangular shape, pushing down on that bottom to flatten it out so that I can attach it to the face. And once I get it in the shape that I want, I'm happy with it. I use my tight bond glue to attach it to his face. For the buttons on the front, I'm using Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint in the color Caviar. It only took one coat, but I did have to go in with a very small brush to get the sides because from the side you would be able to see the white from the paint that I did over these originally right there. So you want to get a little tiny brush and get that so it just looks more finished to me. That's, that's how I like to do it. But of course, doesn't mean you have to do it that way. Everybody can do it however they want. I'm going to use this same paint to make his eyes, so again using the end of a paintbrush, just putting two little dots above that nose. I'm going to paint the nose with that same pumpkin color, and then I'll go over it with the um, Van Dyke Brown Glaze as well.
I'm using this metallic wax in the color Blue Lagoon to go over the tops of my buttons. This can be purchased on Amazon and I will leave the link below. I'm just using my finger to lightly go over the high points of the buttons so it just kind of highlights all that. And I'm just cleaning up there where I got a little bit of it on the snowman himself. It came right off so no worries there. Now we are ready to make the hat and the scarf. This is a little pair of fuzzy socks that I picked up at the thrift store. I'm cutting the toe end off and then I'm cutting upwards, not all the way to the top. I'm going to stop at, oh, it's about an inch and a half from the top, maybe almost two inches. And I'm doing this in thirds, so I'm cutting out the center third of this so that I can... I want to fold this down over itself so that it goes kind of down to a, a, you know, like a pointed triangle shape. Like a, you know those like nightcaps, the long nightcaps, how they hang down? That's what I'm trying to do with this. So I just trimmed away enough to make it narrow significantly down to the bottom of it. And used hot glue to just fold this over and glue it onto the other side. And then touching up there where I had, um, you know, stopped my cut, I needed to make sure that was secure. And now I'm attaching the bottom, trying to get that to just the right size there so that I can glue a little pom-pom onto the bottom. Here's the little pom-pom I found in my stash. I could not believe it. It's the perfect size. I didn't even know I had this in there. Uh, so I, that made me super happy because it fits just perfectly on the end of this hat. So now we can try our hat on for size. I want to make sure I get this down around his little head and have that little cuff rolled up all the way around. Once I have it situated the way that I like it, I attach it with my hot glue. For the scarf, I needed to cut two strips because one wasn't nearly long enough for this guy. So I cut two of these. I'm trimming off the red on the end there. And then I'm going to glue these two strips together, just overlapping one on the other and just putting them together with hot glue. So then I have one long scarf to work with. I just wrapped this around his neck and tied it in a knot on the side. And then I found this blue mesh ribbon. It was like a scrap piece. And I thought that was like the perfect color to add to this. So I just tied that around that little um, recessed area in the base of the snowman. Trimmed up the edges of his scarf and then put the little fringes on the end. Then I trimmed up the mesh ribbon that I had tied on there. I also have these, they're called glitter pebbles, and they're silver. I got them from Hobby Lobby. This is, that's how it looks right there. It's just really small. So I'm going to hot glue one of those in the center of that mesh ribbon where I tied the knot, just to add a little bit of bling. And here's how this one turned out. Now on to our final project. For this one I'm using Dollar Tree ornaments. I have one of the large ones and then the smaller ones you usually get in a little two-pack. I'm going to be using one of those. I want the large one to be the body and the small one to be the head but snowmen don't have necks. So I need to trim off all of that and I'm going to use those little button nippers that I have to remove that so that I can get a much closer fit. Mm -hmm. 
Once I got that removed and I was happy with how that was going to fit, I went ahead and sanded down those sharp edges. So I'm going to be using both Epsom salt and table salt. Epsom salt will be on the outside, the table salt is going on the inside. I'm weighing this down so that it can sit like a stand on its own. And by filling this part way, it gives it that weeble wobble effect. You know, the weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. And I filled it about a third full of the table salt, gave it enough weight that it would just move around and wouldn't flop over. So then I applied some E6000, sorry, I'm out of frame, onto that smaller um, ornament and then just attached that to the bottom one and let that dry. When that was all set up, I took a cotton ball with alcohol and wiped this down really well so that my Mod Podge would adhere nicely to this. Since these are white, I'm not using any paint on these right now. I'm going straight in with my Mod Podge, brushing that on, and then I'm dumping that Epsom salt on top of that. And it will stick to the Mod Podge, and then it gives us this really nice snowy look to our snowman. I take my hand and just gently rub off any of the loose stuff, and then just keep applying the Mod Podge, and then the Epsom salt over the entire thing. And once you get the, the loose stuff off, you need to like set this aside and let it completely dry. And then you can go back over it with another coat of Mod Podge to seal that in so they don't continue to fall off. And that's what I'm doing here. The first layer has come, you know, the, the Mod Podge with the Epsom salt, it's dry. And so then I do another coat of the Mod Podge so that seals all that in so they won't keep flaking off. When that was dry, I decided I did want some color on here, so I used my Heirloom White and my Flat White. And after I had applied those and they were dry, I did finish it off with this Crystal Clear Enamel. It's a gloss finish. And what I did was I sprayed on some of the Heirloom White, and then I immediately went in with the Flat White and spritzed it over it. And I ended up with this really nice combination of whites um, and it brought the shine back so that it looks more like snow. For the eyes, I'm using these little brads. I thought I was going to use them as the buttons also. Um, so I ended up painting more than I needed. But I just used my black chalk paint to paint the tops of these. Then stuck them in that styrofoam to let them dry. While those are drying, I'm going to work on the hat. I need to wrap this around the top part of the snowman's head, and I want it to be tall enough that I can have a little poofy thing at the top of it. So I just guesstimated how much I would need, and then I want to fold over that um, edge. This is the edge that will be at the base of his hat, so I wanted it to be like folded up like a, you know, like a knitted cap is. So I used my hot glue to do that, and then I wrapped this around, trimmed off the excess, and then I could attach this to his head, but I forgot to turn it the other way where the cuff was on the outside. So I glued it down with hot glue and then realized that I did it wrong. I pulled it off, and I could not get that glue off of there, but I fixed that. So I go ahead and I glue it on the right way, even with that little blemish on there, because I'm going to cover that. And I just attach this all the way around his head with the hot glue. When I get to the back where I had started, I go ahead and overlap that just a little bit and secure that down. And then I need to close up the seam at the back as well and I use the hot glue to finish closing that up. I'm adding a little bit of polyfill in there so that when I go to gather this up at the top, it will just have some substance in there so it doesn't lay completely flat against his head. 
and then I use a piece of jute twine to tie this off leaving about I don't know about an inch and a half at the top that I will trim down and make it more like a little poofy situation going on there so I tie this jute twine in a knot get it nice and tight trim that off and then I can trim off the top of the hat and get the look that I want for it. When I had it trimmed off, I then went in and did the little fringe cuts like you do on the scarves so that I could kind of fluff this out like a little poof ball on the top of his hat. So I moved the camera down a little bit here so that hopefully you can see what I'm doing. It's just like when you do the ends of a scarf. I'm just grabbing that every little layer and making those little slits in that fabric. So back to the eyes. These are the little brads that I painted. I'm using my nippers to cut those tabs off so that I all I have left is a little, there's just a little piece um, that I can't get to with those nippers. So I take a little screwdriver and push those little ends down into the center of that brad. And then that way this will lay onto the surface. I just fill that with hot glue and it will lay onto there and attach to his face. For his nose, I'm doing the same as I had done before with the craft stick. I cut out the little shape and then painted it in pumpkin. For his mouth, I'm keeping it really simple since I'm working on this textured surface. Just taking Dixie Bell's caviar chalk paint and painting a simple smile. Then with my white chalk paint, I'm adding the little dots to the eyes. And then we can add his buttons to the front. I'm using these three basic black buttons that I got from this package, I think from Hobby Lobby. And I'm applying these with hot glue. Now to fix this hat, I'm using my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. We're going to make a new cuff for the entire rim of that hat because just folding it up once didn't look right to begin with and then I screwed up with the putting the um, hot glue on it and sticking it wrong side down. So I'm just using this Fabri-Tac glue to fold up to the middle of this strip of uh, fabric and then I will apply it down the center of this and fold that other edge up into the glue so that I have a nice thick piece to wrap around the uh, brim of that cap. I add some hot glue along that original folded up piece, add this to it and just continue that all the way around this hat, trimming off the excess in the back, overlapping it like I did the original part of the hat. And now it looks like it's actually, you know, folded up like a knit cap would be. And it covers up that messy glue spot that I had. For his arms, I'm using this decorative bowl filler that I picked up from Michael's. I'm going to cut off the pieces that I think will work for his arms, drill two small holes, one in each side, and then add quite a bit of hot glue onto this, insert it into the hole, and then add a little more hot glue on the outside to make sure it's secure. Now I wanted to add a little more sparkle to this because the arms are sparkly. So I have my 
fake snow or faux snow from Dollar Tree. I'm going to add a little bit of Mod Podge on here and just kind of drizzle some of that faux snow on there. Kind of press it in a little bit. I didn't want to really glob this on there. So I'm, I'm using it somewhat sparingly just to give a light coverage of this to add a little sparkle. Uh, just so his arms don't stand out so much as being super sparkly. So um, I'm being very careful to not get the glue on the eyes or the nose. I, I don't want it on there. I just want it on his, you know, on the head and the body, kind of tapping it in. Once that dries, I seal it with polyacrylic so that that snow won't continue to flake off. And then at the top of the hat where I had that jute twine, I wanted to add this uh, white and silver twine instead. So I cut off the jute twine and put this one on. I just thought it would look better. Once I got to this point, it just, to me, it looked better than the jute twine. So now I have another one of those snowflake buttons. I'm going to cover it with my Enchanted Shimmer. And once that's dry, I hot glue it onto his hat. Time to attach his scarf using hot glue. I'm just wrapping this around and gluing it into the position that I want. I trim up the ends and add the little fringes on the bottom as I did the other ones. And then I use the hot glue to tack this down in the position that I want it to lay. You know, don't forget, you can make this scarf do whatever you want. It can be blowing in the wind, whatever you want it to do. You just glue it down in the position and, uh, you know, give the illusion of whatever look you're going for. Well, this is the final step for this little guy. Thank you so much for watching. I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy and Healthy New Year. I hope you find my content useful and will like and subscribe if you haven't already. But more importantly, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.